What is up, guys? It's your boy Brennan AK Drip back with another deck profile, another video. <clears throat> In today's video, we have the sauce that like I've been working on for the few weeks. Patreon has known um, about this, they've known about um, what I've been working on, and now I finally get to showcase it to you guys. This deck is absolutely gross. Um, I love it so much. And I hope you all enjoy it too. But with that being said, guys, before we get into this video, uh, hit that like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button. Also, if you haven't already, we're so close to 1,200 and grow in our family. So let's go ahead and get that done and over with and move on to the next one. Uh, so please hit that subscribe button. Um, another thing too, I want to talk about this deck a little bit before I get into the deck profile. Uh, if you know me, you know I like to mention a couple of things, talk about the deck, what I think about it, pros and cons and everything like that, so you don't go in not understanding fully on probably my decisions, which you probably still won't understand 100%, but it's okay. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know down below and I'll, I'll answer the questions. Uh, one thing I will say is the deck will kind of uh, similar, like it'll have a lot of similarities to uh, Danger Tier Limits, which it's basically what it is, but to its core, Post turn one, you'll feel and you'll see that the deck is mainly an Orcus deck, but the tier elements just help fuel your Orcus plays along with giving you an additional support uh, archetype, basically. Because beforehand, like for the longest time, Orcus actually hasn't really had that much of a secondary archetype that can want not only fuel what Orcus is trying to do, but also like help like carry the deck or carry the duel basically normally it's like work is doing it all if, if it has to so tier limits actually help in that regard but the play style is basically danger tier but in my personal opinion more resilient than danger tier because this deck can do every single thing danger tier does but in some in situations better and more, uh, the deck is more efficient if that makes sense um but I got third place with this deck. I uh, lost in the finals to time because the time rules are absolutely terrible. But uh, the past, I, done, I actually I lost in time back to back weeks in the finals. Kind of frustrating, um, but it is what it is. This deck, I I don't want to change anything of this deck. Uh, reason why I haven't shown you guys before is because I wanted to make sure I had the list of where I wanted it. And this is exactly where I want it. If I were to take it to an event, there's only one thing I think I would change, which I'll let you guys know of that card when we get there. Um, but with that being without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started guys. Um, start off. I'm going to, I want to do this deck profile on uh, engines and then we'll just do overall generic cards. Uh, three Gearsu. Gearsu is Gearsu. Two Nightmare. Two Skeleton. Two Wand. Um, if you know me, outside of like some decks, I run Brass. This is my standard lineup. The rest of the Orcus cards is uh, the one Return. Oh, sorry, one Babel. And in this deck, since we mill a lot, I run two Crescendo, and I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, since I have ran two Crescendo in this deck, in this specific build, the second one is just so crucial. Um, because if you mill one, you have the other. And then sometimes, even if you don't mill it, the second one just kind of comes in clutch sometimes. And since this deck has so many like one card to two card starters, it doesn't hurt if you draw it. Because in normal other Orcus decks, it sucks drawing this most of the time. Uh, because it's a brick, and then you don't have... The one thing that Orcus has struggled with throughout the years is not having enough extenders. That's why a lot of people just revert to playing the trap version of the deck. As of where this one has a bunch of extenders and completely like go off. And the ability to search on our opponent's turn with this, if you don't use the first effect, is actually really ridiculous. Because it sets you up very well and like always keeps you in the game. And one thing that the Orcus likes to do is stay in the game and grind, which is another reason why it pairs with Tier so well, because that's all Tier likes to do is grind. So it's it's really, really cool how they pair together. And the second, uh, the second one has worked really well for me. 
Uh, but that's it for the Orcus lineup. Let's go to the tier lineup. Uh, three Havnas, three Ed Sheeran. <laughs> that's what we call her, Ed Sheeran. Uh, three Sheeran. Um, and then two Merle and one Rhino Harp. The reason why I did not max out on Merle is one, I uh, have enough normal summons. This plus the gear suits gives me six normal summons. I don't want too many normal summons. And also, if I'm normal summon a monster, I want to normal summon an Orcus monster because it has Orcus in the name. Granted, one thing I will say in this specific build of tier, Merle is uh, the best one. Not because we're running sprite cards or anything like that, because we're not. Um, the reason why is because she gives us an additional meal. So basically when you do the combo where you go and you go kit, uh, kit Kalos to search, you search this, search Merle, and you use Kit's effect to pop herself, summon Merle, you're milling eight if it goes untouched, which most of the time in this format, Ash is nowhere to be found, so it resolves. So you're milling eight, which will get your other, get these engraved or your Orcus cards at the very least. Or whatever else you may need, utility wise. And then we only the only reason I even run Rhino Heart, to be honest, is uh, so I have uh, a way to make uh, Kaleida Heart one second. Other than that, I probably wouldn't even run him because he's not a dark. He's a warrior, but he is a level four. I will give him that. That's basically the only other reason that I run him. Just in this specific build, he's not like busted like he is in others. Uh, then for the dangers, we have the best one because it's an Aqua. Uh, Three Nessie. Nessie is Nessie. Uh, Such and Jack. And then this is the one card that I would change, and that is uh, Bigfoot. The only reason I run Bigfoot is because my locals, it's a locals um, meta call, basically. And that the reason why is because a lot of my locals will have floodgates, and I want to be able to like use Sheeran um, to send Bigfoot to pop, or if uh, Bigfoot gets discarded out of hand, then um, it can pop floodgates. That's basically the only reason I even run it. Uh, other than that, I would run um, probably, if I was taking this to a event, I'd probably run Sulik over this. Um, but I don't know. Or Mothman, one of the two. So you, you can call whatever you want right here. Other than that, the rest of the deck is made like, I wouldn't change a single thing because it would hurt its consistency. But right here, you can make the meta call to where if you want the extra extender and the uh, danger and you want to test your RNG, then run Bigfoot. Um, or you can run this or run uh, Mothman for the level four aspect. Other than that, I would not run Mothman. The reason why I'm not currently running Mothman is because I don't want to accidentally right now at one of my locals, I do play at two locals at one of my locals. I am the only tier player, but at the other locals I play at, um, I am not the only tier player and I don't want it to get discarded and my opponent to get plays off turn zero and for their turn zero even without them having happiness in hand that's just no i don't i don't want that to happen so that's the reason why i'm not running it because if i need to make rank fours i have plenty of ways to make rank fours because gear Sue is a level four uh uh rhino hearts a level four and then sheeran's a level four and we have a couple more in the deck too and you'll see as we go along um but that is it for the danger lineup. And then pseudo danger, because when you see this card, when your opponent sees this card, they're in danger. This card is absolutely busted. And uh, it's Fairy Tale Snow, which is our last rank four in the deck. Uh, this card is just disgusting. Um, probably going to get banned by the time uh, you see this video. If this card's banned and uh, Harp Horror is not legal, because if Harp is legal and this is banned, then just put Harp in this card's place. But if they're both legal, then that's disgusting. Um, at that point, I would probably take out Bigfoot for um, Harp. But if Fairy Tale Snow is banned and Harp doesn't come back, then just put um, you can put Mothman in this in this slot. Um, but yeah, I don't really need to say nothing about Snow to be honest. Snow is Snow. We all know what she's capable of. One of the generic spells. We have um, uh, three droplet, and it's mainly because people are starting to play Dweller now, and I want an I want an out to that card. And on top of that, this will send Orcus cards get Orcus cards out of our hand if we don't draw Sheeran or we just hard draw the Orcus cards. So um, that's another reason why we run that over run this over uh, uh, Dark Ruler, and then we like one card starters. 
Uh, Instant Fusion is just a one-card starter. It can arguably be banned, to be honest. Um, it's it's really gross. And then one card that I run that other tier players don't, and I know it kind of sounds counterproductive compared to what I just said about, um, about uh, Mothman, but the reason why is if Mothman gets discarded, your opponent pluses and you c- could potentially go neg. Um, as aware, if this card resolves, even if your opponent pluses, you're going to probably plus harder because it's your turn and not theirs. And that is um, uh, card destruction. If you draw this with a handful of dangerous tears and orcas, like for an example, th- like you're going second. If you go second with this card, it's disgusting because you're going to plus even harder than your opponent because they're not going to really have a hand because it's all going to be on the board. And then you just have a handful of Orcus, Dangers, and Tears, and then you just you activate this if this resolves. And then you're just, this is a one-card full combo for the most part, depending on your hand. And even if it's not a one-card full-card combo, you're at least getting your Orcus and uh, da- um, Tears and Grave. And then if you have Dangers too, then you're just plus and uh, harder than like your opponent can. This card is absolutely disgusting. Um, I mean, I do understand why, I don't understand why people haven't thought about it, but I do understand if the people that have thought about it has chosen not to because in the tier limit, tier limit mirror, sorry, I can't talk. The tier limit mirror, it would it probably they probably don't want your opponent their opponent to plus that hard. But I feel like I could potentially out plus my opponent because nobody is on the Orcus cards. And the worst thing that my opponent could potentially do um, is make a uh, make a kit and add their uh, next card or whatever. As of where me, I get dangers and I can get tier and I can get Orcus and Grave too. So um, that's why I feel like I can just out out like not really out resource them, but out like plus them in that regard. That's the reason why we run this because this card is just absolutely gross. Every time I have this card in hand, it's it's, it's really disgusting. Um, and then one foolish burial because it's a one card starter too. Um, not much needs to be said about that. Uh, it's at one for a reason, and then my main deck, um, my main deck out to uh, what should call it, Mystic Mine. I know a lot of people have actually cut Cyclone. Um, I don't want to. It's it's worked a lot of wonders for me to even out Mystic Mine or other floodgates or stuff like that. It's two for one. You have it in hand. You pop something, and next turn you could banish it and pop something else. It's it's a free back row out while not having to worry about. Oh man, I have twin twisters in the deck. What if I don't draw it, but I mill it, and then I just don't see them? Well, you don't have to worry about that with cycling because even if you mill it, the next turn you can uh, use it to pop. So, uh, yeah, there's that's the reason why, in my opinion, I'm still wanting to run it. Um, and then the uh, last four cards are traps. Um, I got Imperm here. Uh, you can argue uh, Super Poly. Because if I wasn't going to run Imperm, I would be main decking Super Poly. But the only reason why I don't main deck Super Poly is because a lot of people nowadays, like a lot of good players at least, will play around Super Poly or you're playing against some kind of rogue deck that don't even play into your Super Poly targets, which is kind of crazy considering they're all generic for the most part. Um, so I decided to side deck Super Poly. And then before when I was playtesting this deck, I, got, I, I didn't have no real interaction with my opponent's board when I lost a die roll besides Havnus, and I wanted to be able to have some kind of interaction while still not playing into talents because people are on board breakers right now. So I don't want to play into talents. And on top of that, if you're playing against Sprite, Sprite hardly ever goes um, carrot. They always go red. So you can still, like, you can hit their um, uh, uh, giant Sprite with this and then not have to worry about it getting negated. Um, with the um, like carrot because they don't go carrot they always go red for the most part so that's the reason why it was a meta call for me to run this because this card's not a hard once per turn you can activate it out of hand and it's really gross but I will um, uh, I do understand some people's complications with it probably because it can to a degree conflict with halfness but if you do your chains right you should be okay like for an example you can um, uh, chain um, you could chain uh, a haveness in this or the ha- this and the haveness or whatever. So you, like, you could chain it and resolve it and then just resolve the other one. So it's it's fine. I've done that several times. Um, but so they don't conflict with each other. Um, and then the last card in the, the deck is uh, the Eradicator because for combo. 
we go and get this. Every time I've resolved this card, I'm pretty sure every time I resolve this card, I've I've won. I can't remember a time where I have resolved this and not won. This card just steals games. And in this deck, with whether we're having tier monsters, we also have Orcus monsters too that can um, um, use this card for. I uh, misplayed really bad uh, on stream last night because at the time of recording, this is Friday. Um, so I went to the Thursday night locals. Uh, at the time on stream, if you were there, I'm sorry if you saw me misplay. I forgot to make Ding for this card. And um, to tribute off, but now I proceed. I misplayed, then proceeded to misplay again. I was so heated um, because even if you, uh, what you do with this card, for an example, like I'm going to backtrack here for a second. What you do is you basically go Griffin to floodgate them, and then make um, go crescendo. Uh, use Griffin to grab this back from grave, and then you go Orcus combo after you go Griffin, and then Orcus combo will go get you Babel. And then you uh, activate the Babel. So then you will have a graveyard full of tears and full of um, Orcus cards. And then you set on this card and then uh, set with uh, Babel. And then you make uh, Dingirsu. And then on your opponent's standby phase, you tribute to Dingirsu for this card's effect. Declare whatever spell or traps. Um, and then lock them out of that and destroy all those uh, from their hand on field. And then in your graveyard, you can uh, bring back Ding to send one. Uh, send one card they have. So basically you have the standard Orcus interruptions while also locking them out of spells or traps. And they also only, they, they can only get one special summon monster effect because of um, Griffin. Griffin's effect says your opponent's monster, uh, well, not opponent, but monsters cannot, act, special summon monsters cannot activate their effects unless they're linked. And sadly, even though uh, we get, we do give them one link zone, so they can just special summon to Griffin, but if they don't have another way to get that monster off the board, then they don't get another special summon monster effect. So we're floodgating them in in two separate ways, along with still getting a send off of Dengirsu or a reattached off of Dengirsu. So that's basically the com the gist of the combo. Um, but I messed up on stream because I didn't make Ding. I left Galley on board. But in some situations, even if you leave Galley on board, if you have Nightmare in Grave, you can still play through it because you just use Nightmare to um, uh, send Wand, and then um, Galley will become 2600 because you have Babel on board. So you could just um, use a Nightmare Send Wand, make the uh, Galatea 26, and then you just use Eradicator to tribute the Galatea. Uh, but I've, I messed up again because when I did that, I accidentally sent Skeleton instead of Wand and didn't give her enough. But luckily enough, uh, he didn't out this card. He out the rest of my board. Um, and, uh, my back row wise and then you could just I, I used it the next turn which stole me the game but um yeah uh, moving on to the extra deck sorry for rambling right there I just wanted to uh, let y'all know tokens because we love tokens 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 if you're not running if you're running Orcus and not running the world legacy tokens what are you doing bro what are you doing bro um uh two of my gorgeous Ultimate rare wife. Um, she, you don't really. The third one never really comes up. The third one has come up a few times, but there's no room for it. And if it comes to the point where you need a third one, you're probably gonna lose that game anyways. And long gear suit. Everyone sleeps on long. They've always slept on long for a long time since long's been around. This card has won me games because uh, I, sometimes I need the double ding effect, and you can just use this and then go into ding. Um. And then speaking of his beautiful self, ignore the fact I only have one ulti. I'm sorry, I'm poor. I don't have 80 bucks. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, two ding. The second ding always comes up. Third one never does. This is this is basically standard Orcus stuff. It has been for a long time. Um, not much needs to be said. Uh, moving on to the fusions. We have uh, one kit, one Kaleido Heart. The second kit never comes up really. Because if you do, if you're playing tier properly and the game state's going to your pace, you can shuffle all of your um, all of your stuff back, um, all of your other fusion. So you can shuffle this back easily. Um, and then more fusion goodness. We got Dragus Topelia, King of the Swamp. I actually cut this for the longest time. I cut this, and I'm so happy that I added it back because this card came in freaking clutch for me last night. This card is disgusting. As soon as you summon it, most of the time you summon this before you even go Orcus combo. You just use this to use this to call Dark 
and then um, you're just Gucci. But even if you have, but even if you summon this before you go workers combo, and you know you have workers combo, there's nothing they can do to interrupt you besides like nibbing you or something, and you still are waiting to go um, Griffin combo, finish your Griffin combo. You can just use this to clear light. And your opponent can't target your light stuff anymore, so you don't have to worry about imperm or anything like that. So um, it's 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 really gross. It's this card is absolutely disgusting, um, and I'm so happy that I did not cut it. And it's a four too, and it's a worm, which helps you make curious. It just the utility of that card is so good, and I swear by it now. I'm so happy I added it back. The last one is obviously Garuda. You can hard make all of these pretty easily, even by shuffling back your Orcus cards back into the deck, which is really cool. And then the Curious combo. Curious and then uh, Griffin. Griffin to bring back our stuff. Shoutouts to my teammate Eric for the uh, Ultra Rare. Love you, buddy. Um, I had a Secret Rare, but I traded it back in the day. I never thought I was going to be good again after uh, MR4. And then... The God card, Zoroboros. This card is absolutely disgusting. It's a win button. Um, this is how you win. This is how you ban banish entire big boards that you just can't out everything with like dings and longs. You just bait everything. And since it's a dark, you can just link into this and just completely just wreak havoc on their board and just win. Uh, Zoroboros is disgusting, and it makes it even better that uh, last year or whatever, um, they eroded him to make him even better. And the last two cards in the deck, is uh, Baguska and um, Dugaris. There's some situations where you don't open enough dangers because our danger count is kind of low, but you do open Orcus combo. And if you basically, if you open um, Sheeran and then Girsu, you can uh, use Sheeran if you are uh, a bad duelist like me and you just waffle, aka whiff, on your mills, even though you run a maxed out tier elements. Um, main deck besides one Merle, you're missing one whole card to not be maxed out. Um, sometimes you will uh, whiff your mills, but you still get access to two level fours. So um, basically, like for an example, if you open a Danger, a Sheeran, and um, a, a Girsu, which kind of might kind of sound kind of situational, but it's actually really not. All you need is two level fours and a, an Orcus combo, basically, and to get you there, you can end on Galatea, Baguska, and like Crescendo. And the Crescendo will back up your Baguska to ensure that it sticks so they don't freaking Dark Ruler you. It enforces them to where they have to open Dark Ruler, double Dark Ruler, or a Dark Ruler and a Dropless in order to play through your little board. Because And it also, in the same sense, it plays around um, it plays around Super Poly because this is an Earth, and um, Galatea is a Dark, because there's nothing more annoying than uh, setting Crescendo and then getting uh, Super Poly, and your Crescendo is just dead now because you don't have Galley anymore. Um, the Nagaras just completely fuels, uh, filters everything. Uh, he draws two discards, one, which the discard will proc your um, tier limits. It can double the attack of anything, which normally we, when, after we banish the entire board, make this huge, we can get him, get uh, Zero Boros up to like 11 to 12k most of the time and just punch him in the face. Uh, and he can resurrect stuff from the grave, so... Um, it's very situational, but if you like play stuff in your side like uh, Spell Canceller or something like that, you can just use this to uh, resurrect it back. Um, another thing, too, is uh, what a lot of people don't know is Baguska actually can proc your tears, too. So, um, yeah, it's really gross. Uh, it's very, very gross. Um, but that's it for the extra deck. 15 extra, 40 main. Um, I'll, this is a tournament deck, so I will show the side real quick. Um, this is honestly the first deck that I can actually utilize this card because any other deck is usually a hard fusion based deck that requires fusion spells. Um, and that's anti spell. Uh, it's really gross. There's a certain situation that I think it was on stream. It was on stream. I think it was round three or round four on stream. I had this and then I also had this. So I had both. I used this first and I couldn't kill with before this card was, uh, or ended. And then on the standby phase of the next turn, on that same turn, uh, on the end phase of that turn, I just activate a perfume. I mean, not perfume, Jesus Christ. Uh, anti spell. Uh, they're um, Italian. Sorry, I said perfume because I read the Italian part. But um, yeah, anti spell is just gross because we don't really care about spells past turn one, turn two, if that at all. Uh, so anti spell doesn't do nothing to us. And in my own little spicy tech, because no one expects it. 
and it can proc our tears along with getting Orcus in our grave, so we don't really care about this card. That's Torrential Tribute. Um, torrential is Torrential. It uh, puts in some serious work if you time it properly. And, uh, yeah, it's really nasty. Um, one God card, Reboot. This card is absolutely disgusting. Every time I draw it, it just goes in. Uh, and then two evenly, double evenly. Triple Super Poly. Super Poly, Super Poly. One Duster. And then two Ultimate Slayer. Um, one thing, if you haven't noticed... Out my go second cards, which are the Ultimate Slayers, the Duster, these, all of these. If you haven't noticed, because the the uh, first six are uh, going first cards, all of these. What I wanted to do when I made when I made my side deck is I wanted to make every single one of them very good to have in my hand going second, but really good to where uh, drawing them for my sixth card. I wanted to make all of them a good go six. Uh, uh, oh my God, can't even talk. A good six card slash draw because there's nothing I hate more than siding in like Nibiru or something like that. And then um, my opponent, uh, I'm, I'm not my opponent, but I, I sign in Nibiru's and then I draw them for my six card. I'm like, okay, where were you a second ago? So I mainly wanted to make them good uh, six cards, basically, if that makes sense. Um, one thing I will say is uh, I know not um, like everybody wants to try to keep it budget if all is possible. I get that 100% agree with you. That's fine. If you don't have access to evenlies, if you really can't get evenlies, I like uh, I beg you to try to get them because they are so necessary going second. But if you can't afford them, there's no way around it. Then what I would do if I were you is I would add make these two trap trick. And if you can't afford ultimate slayer, I would make the this uh, a pointer, a pointer um, of the red lotus. Um, so then that makes it to where uh, you can't or if it's not a pointer, then make it um, a deck devastation virus. Uh, that might be a better one, a better option, because that makes it all searchable through Trap Trick, because that means Trap Trick could search these, uh, which would these will be deck devies, and then it could also search these, and then it could, um, if you wanted to uh, make clear up another slot through here, like drop Super Poly to two or whatever, you could put in another Epidemic virus, and it could search that. And it could also search your imperms too, since you main deck imperm. Um, so basically, you wouldn't need to max out on trap trick and run three; you just need two. Um, but if you can't afford that, that's what I do because that's what I used to run, and it was okay. But I ran into the option a lot to where I never had enough going second cards. That's why I made this side deck the way it is now. But I understand ultimate slayer is like a fifty dollar card, and evenly matched is like a twenty to thirty dollar card, depending on the rarity or higher. And I understand um, they're expensive. So I just wanted to also give you guys uh, pointers on that one as well. Um, but that is it for the main extra and side deck, guys. This deck is absolutely disgusting. It's slept on. I really think the deck as a whole can compete at the highest level and potentially be like the best deck since Danger Tier is like the best deck anyways. This deck can do everything Danger Tier, I mean, Danger Tier can do and some. So I really think the deck is like very, uh, very, very powerful. Um, and if we get heart back, it's just going to be even better. If for some odd reason we get heart back and they don't hit like Curious or um, Snow, this deck, and I'm not even kidding, guys. If that happens and we get heart back too, this deck will be the best deck. And I think it could be the best deck and it makes it even better that no one's even thinking of it which I'm sure if Harp comes back, people will think of it or try to mix it, and they're afraid to mix it now because I don't know why they think it wouldn't be good without Harp. The deck functions just as well without Harp, even though we would like to have the plus one, the ability to summon Girsu from deck on our opponent's turn with Harp would be really, really juicy. But I don't know. Only time will tell in the time of recording this video. Sadly, the ban list is not out yet. But I will say, if the ban list does come out, expect, and if we do get Harp back, expect an updated version of this list, of this deck. And if Curious gets banned, expect um, an updated list. More of the story, if we get a list and it impacts this deck severely, expect an updated list. And I know I could have held out and uploaded this after the ban list, but I just really wanted to um, show you guys what I've been working with the past few weeks. And I missed you guys because I haven't been able to talk to you guys on like a uh, like a 
like a week or so or longer. I haven't made an in-person video in a while, so I really missed you guys and wanted to talk to you guys. But with, with that being said, guys, I'm sorry if I held, uh, held you over too long. If you made it this far, then you're the real OG, and I love you guys so much for it. But with that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful night, morning, evening, whenever you're watching this video. I hope your beautiful faces are staying safe out there and you enjoyed this video. It's your boy, Brendan, a.k.a. Drip, signing out for this video. Love you guys. Peace.